some of its imperfections are gruesome. For instance, I'm standing now at Shin Okubo Station on the Yamanote Line. It's one of Tokyo's busiest rail lines running in a circle around the center of the city. And on a Friday night rush hour in 2001, when it was a lot more crowded than the station is at the moment, a drunk man fell off the platform and onto the tracks. A photographer who was in the crowd saw what happened and jumped down onto the tracks to save the man. A South Korean exchange student who was also in the crowd saw what happened and he also jumped onto the tracks to try to save the man. So three men who were total strangers found themselves on the tracks together unexpectedly. And the train killed all of them. Now I'm standing in Shinjuku Station on the Rio Line, where on a Monday night rush hour in 2010, a man sat down on the platform because his blood pressure medication made him feel dizzy. He was safely away from the edge of the platform, but he was at the end of a line of people waiting to get onto the train. The train's force was announced, he tried to stand up. Famous victims, heroic victims, blind victims, but hundreds of people are killed or injured by trains without ever making the news. And it was one of these unknown cases that is the reason for my personal interest in uh, this otherwise very morbid topic. A good friend of mine who lives in New York City went out to a restaurant one day and got food poisoning. It's the sort of thing that can happen to anyone. But in his case, it was so bad that he collapsed on the platform of a New York City subway station. He's lucky that he didn't fall off of the platform, but he was right on the edge of it, and a passing train hit his leg. He's had a number of reconstructive surgeries since then, and a lot of rehabilitation, and he's not finished yet. Uh, but his story did not make the news. In New York City, as in Tokyo, just getting hit by a train all by itself, merely getting hit by a train, isn't considered newsworthy. That's just life in the big city. But it doesn't have to be that way. In a growing number of train stations in Tokyo in recent years, safety barriers have been set up along the edges of platforms, like this one at the Chanomizu Station on the Marunouchi Line. According to a 2010 Japanese newspaper article, on the Marunouchi Line alone, a dozen people a year used to fall off the platform and the tracks. But in the first year after these barriers were set up, that number dropped to zero. By coincidence, when I went to visit my friend in New York City after his accident in early 2011, I found out that the Metropolitan Transportation Authority in that city was considering installing their own safety barriers on subway station platforms. According to an article in the New York Daily News at the time, 90 people had been hit by trains in 2009, and 40 of those people had died. So over the course of a decade, that works out to 900 people hit and 400 people killed. Uh, the article also said, Proponents say the doors would do more than just help protect passengers. It would also help reduce the number of lawsuits and the million-dollar payouts the agency faces each year. Another added benefit? The doors would prevent trash from being tossed or blown onto the tracks. Hundreds of trains are delayed each month by small fires ignited by sparks from trains and the electrified third rail. Uh, 
so it sounds like the safety barriers would be a pretty good idea. Uh, but the Daily News editorial disparaged them as something that would add a touch of Disneyland to the subway system. And one of the Daily News' columnists complained that they would be an insult to tough New York City subway passengers who pride themselves on their grittiness. Uh, but rather than get into that silliness, let's stick to the facts and allow me to show you how the uh, safety barriers that we actually have here in Tokyo work. Uh, there are two basic types. Some of them work like this. Sometimes they work like this. The New York Daily News article and commentary provoked a number of letters to the editor. One of them was from a lady who wrote, I don't want to see them, meaning safety barriers, everywhere just because a few people had the misfortune to fall onto the tracks. Uh, I take issue with her characterization of one person killed every nine days, which is what 40 a year works out to, as just a few people. Uh, but I will give her credit for listing some specific reasons that she thinks safety barriers on subway platforms would be impractical. Uh, here's one of them. Quote, the platforms are too long. Where would shorter trains stop to line up with the doors? Well, let me show you something. As you can see, there's a train stop in the city that didn't come as far as this door. So this door didn't come from the people who are afraid to bring you. Here's another objection from the letter. If the panels are made of glass, kids will break them. If they're made of plastic, kids will carve their initials in them. Well, let me show you something. I don't know if this material is glass or plastic, but I'm sure it doesn't break very easily. And I'm also sure that if I didn't break it or carve my initials in it, I would be arrested. And that would solve that problem. And here's another objection from the letter. The panels would stop air circulation. Well, let me show you something. If there's glass or plastic in the door, there's glass or plastic next to the door, but in the panels above the door, there's nothing. So air can circulate, even though there's a barrier. The hot air from the station rises out into the tunnel, and as the trains come and go, they still mix the air around. So there may not be as much air circulation as a tunnel, a platform without barriers, but it's not really a problem in practice. And of course, in the case of the lower metal barriers, air circulation is no issue at all. And remember, it's this kind of barrier that reduced the number of falls from platforms on the Maranoshi line from an average of one a month to zero. 